But here's the good news of all this. Jesus come to set the captive free. And he come to change our picture. And uh, thank God it's not about me, but it's about me in him. And it changes the reality. Oh, that's good news. And just knowing this, that in my present condition without Christ, I don't have a chance. Well, that's not time to give up and say, well, you know, whatever, you know. But that's time to embrace him. That's time to uh, join together with him in, in covenant relationship and realize this thing's all going to change as a result of my new, huh? You know what I'm talking about. I brought him in my life. Jesus coming. He said, behold, I stand at the door knock. All we got to do is open up. I surrender all. Come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. And all this turns around in a moment's notice. Come on, church. I know you've heard this verse, but turn to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And, and this, is, this is one of these realities I'm, I'm going to share. But sin has ruined. I said sin has ruined all. You're not getting away from that. And, and you know as all people say, well, I, don't, I, I, I just think that's negative. That's negative vibes. You know, that's not positive. But here's the truth of the matter. We're not all getting a blue ribbon. In, in the world, I'm, I'm, take, take the church out, take the world out, whatever. And, and you know, I, I've, shared, I've shared this before, but now we have, uh, they have Little League football. And uh, when I was a kid, Leon, they had first place, second place, third place, fourth place. There was four teams in the little town I grew up around. And at the end of the season, they had a big uh, meeting, and we had little snacks and refreshments, and they gave out trophies for the year. And But I think nowadays a lot of stuff is done like everybody just gets the same, you know, hey, y'all y'all got a blue ribbon, y'all saw first place. Go, 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 you know. And, and really, uh, that's not – reality and a lot of times you know within the church and this and that we want to justify we want a candy coat we want to perfume up we want to make excuse for but the bottom line is this sin has ruined us all amen man has a sin nature the day he is born regardless of what anyone thinks well that that little baby's so uh, innocent and yeah but there comes a time because you're born with this sin nature within us that we will make a choice and I promise you everyone has chose sin everyone has chose the wrong direction and that's the reason what the church ought to be all about restoration getting you out of that reversing this thing amen I have been what redeemed from the curse of the law. And in our situation without Christ, we are cursed. We are yet to be redeemed. And it's a result of sin has ruined us all. Let me read a verse. Because you know, some people are still hung up on this performance line. Your performance. You need to get off that. Because that's not healthy. You know, uh, your perform your spiritual performance, I'm going to tell you about it. On your best day, here's what the Bible says, it is as filthy rags before God. Our righteousness, that's your performance. This is, this is even old covenant. They've had this figured out for a long time. Our righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord. So we got to only feel good in Christ. I am more than a conqueror, doesn't stop her, through him that loved me. And it's only when you channel through him. It's when you put on the righteousness of Christ. When you throw away your self-righteousness and you put on his righteousness, then it'll begin to work for you. Amen? But until then, here's the sad truth. I'm about to read it to you. Romans 3, verse 23. For all, that be A, double L. Y'all with me? We don't, 
you know, I'm not talking about having a spelling bee this morning, but I believe we all know what A-double-L is. No one excluded, everyone included. Amen? For all have sinned. You done did it. Well, I beg to differ. You can beg to differ all you want. I'm telling you what the truth of the word says. There's times we need to just get ourselves out of the way, get our pride out of the way. I'm not giving my opinion this morning. I'm giving you the meat of the word of God. And what it has to say about people is all have sinned. So whenever someone, you know, maybe gives this testimony, I just want to thank the Lord I've never sinned a day in my life. This would be safe to do. Label them as a liar. Because they have. Well, you know, you're, you're, you're being judgmental. I, I've had about all that I can put up with. It's time for the church to speak God's word, quit catering to certain things, and calling white, white, and black, black. And I'm telling you right now, all have sinned. If it were possible, he would not have paid that great price of his son on Calvary's cross. <coughs> all have sinned, and they come short of the glory of God. You know what coming short means? You failed. Yeah. You ever, you ever be in the middle of a test and you're like, I sure hope I pass. I was there this week. And, and, and you know, there's times in the middle of that, uh, it, it was not perfect. And I thought, I just wonder if that's enough. I sure hope that's not enough, you know. And uh, you, you keep going. You, you know, don't let it get you down, but you keep going. And, and But at the end of the day, because this is on your performance, and there's people, I'm telling you, there's, there's many, many people in the church today. It would just shock you that are feeling good about their performance. But what the Bible says is, concerning your performance, you come short. Concerning your uh, self-effort, your uh, you know, self-righteousness, you have failed. And that's really, we just got to accept that. Hey, that's how it is. And the quicker you accept that, the quicker you're going to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ and the liberty that we have in Jesus Christ as a result of what he did for us on Calvary. Y'all with me? For all have sinned, and they've come short of the glory of God. And that's really what it amounts to. The glory of God. You may get someone to embrace you. You may get someone to accept you. You may get someone to say, oh, you're okay. Don't worry about that. That's fine. You know? Yeah. But God is who matters. Because he's our judge. Because we will all give account. We will all stand before him. Amen? And I'll, I'll take this to a, 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 another way with that. When you get in Christ and you're clicking along there in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, you're going to come across those who will say, mm, you're not good enough. Uh, you're a failure. And you can't let that stuff enter in. You can't entertain that. you got to trust God and His Word and stand upon that. Are y'all with me? Way back when, this is just a little example that I personally experienced, but uh, I didn't always have a goatee. I just had a mustache. And I was a young preacher. And there was an electrician there on the job. He's passed away now. I believe he loved God. He was a pastor. He was a preacher. And a uh, guy I was working for told him, he said, uh, he, he's, he's going to be a preacher too. You know, and I was just kind of getting started. But anyway, we sat there eating lunch, and he said, you do realize that you will not go very far with that mustache trying to preach. And it just, it just kind of floored me, you know. I thought, it just didn't make me feel good, Leon, you know. And it wasn't so much that it was an ad, but I thought, I thought they pulled the big old chunks out of Jesus' beard. You know, my Savior had a beard. And I'm sure he had a mustache with it. Now, who knows, he may not have. But I'm just saying he had facial hair. And you're sitting here, this man was very mature. 
known for being an anointed preacher, had a church for many years, and you know what he had to share with me? You're not going to go very far. What's well, that mustache? What do you call that? I just wish back then I would have known better than, the, you know, because there's a lot of things, church, that come at us. You need to let it go in this ear and right out that ear. And don't let that thing make a home. Don't let that, you know, you, you can spend the next week of your life struggling with that. And you know what a lot of them do? They go home and shave. And guess what? They get accepted. You jump through our little hoop here. Now we'll give you the right arm fellowship. It goes on in church all the time. And I would just love to see a lot of that disappear because it causes so much confusion when the gospel of Christ is so crystal clear. Are y'all with me? But we must come to agreement. I have to look at myself. And you got to look at yourself. A lot of people like to look at somebody else. You have uh, sinned and you have come short. We need to look at ourselves with that. Let every man examine himself is what the Bible teaches. But I have to look in that mirror and say, you've sinned and you've come short of the glory of God. And that's just the truth. We are not perfect people. God is not looking for perfect people. God is looking for people who will trust his son. Are y'all with me? And then, you know, when you get all this revelation on the inside and you get understanding, then you see how important the church is. Amen. This church is where we come and we strengthen what? Our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, uh, let me move on here. Another great thing, great reality. Uh, Christ was the ransom for all. We're back to A-double-L again. But you're like, man, I'm, 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 I failed. I've come short. I've sinned. Well, now don't stop there. You know, remember that he haw song? What was that, that song? At the end, they spit on each other. <laughs> uh, whoa, despair. You know what I'm talking about. But there's people who live that way. And, you know, my dog died. And, I mean, I know things happen. And, and if your dog passed away, I'm not poking fun at you. But they, they just stay there. And they stay bummed out. And they stay miserable. And it's just the same thing over and over. You remember when, uh, uh, I believe Moses passed. God buried him. He, he, he did not want his burial site to be a hangout place. I, I, that's just me. You know, I might be totally wrong. But I'm just telling you, God himself buried him. They didn't know where he was buried because this was a great man and he has passed. He was 120 years old, still had his strength, his sight, and all that good stuff. But he, he was done. He wasn't entering in. And he passed and God buried him. And guess what they did? They moved on. They moved on. And I know there's things in life that happen that are painful, but I'm telling you right now, if someone passed away years ago and that's all you're thinking about every day of your life, it's time to move on. Or if you was in a relationship with a spouse or whatever, and you know, just uh, all you do is hang out in the fact that she cheated on me, she took all my money and left. I got home from work that day and all I could find in the house she left me was a, a, a little butter knife and one fork, you know. Uh, you need to move on. You, you need to come out of that. God did not create us to live in the hurts of our past. God created us to wake up every morning and realize that the mercy of the Lord is fresh on me today. Uh, I got me a new covering of the blood of Calvary and I'm going to walk in victory. I'm going to put the devil under my feet and I'm going to walk in what his God, his promises are yea and amen and that's exactly what I'm going to have today. And then whenever these things come and try to rest on us and eat up our thought process, church, we need to learn to start thinking about what we're thinking about and casting down these thoughts and imaginations that bring up us against the, what God's word has to say and say that's a lie from hell and we're not going there today. Come on church. What are you talking about? We've been redeemed. We got a ransom. Let me read to you. 1 Timothy 2 verse 6 talking about Jesus. 
He paid it all. Isn't that good? You ever been somewhere and they say, hey, uh, they, they bought your meal. Ooh, hallelujah. Now you get people going on that one. They do a shot of McConnell. They got a free buffet. I got something better than that. It says who, talking about who is Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. A double L. To be testified in due time. You ever seen, uh, I've seen movies over the years where there will be a kidnapping and they get a ransom note. You know, you want your kid back in one piece? Meet us at, you know, 7 p.m. tonight under the bridge and have a million dollars in unmarked bills and we'll have your kid back to you. That's a ransom. In other words, if you want to be freed, if you want your child to be freed, a ransom must be paid. Okay? That means that we were kidnapped. If there's a ransom involved, that means we were kidnapped. And what I want you to see is when you fall into that category of we have sinned and we all fall short, you now belong to who? The enemy of your soul. He has a legal right to you. A devil don't have me. Yes, he does. You can talk that stuff till you die, but just split hell wide open because this is bigger than you. This is bigger than your thoughts. This is bigger than your opinion. He has a legal right to us because we've given ourselves over to him. And, and, and the ransom had to be paid. Things had to be made right. Things had to be restored. And the Bible clearly says that Jesus is the ransom for all. That's the good news. Well, I know he didn't do that for me. Yes, he did. You know, people that talk such craziness, you got to believe the Bible to be true. Or this, this isn't going to happen. This isn't going to work for you. Well, I hope he was my ransom. You got to know he was your ransom. How come? Because God is not a man that he can lie. It is impossible for God to lie. If you read something in here and it is a lie, that means that God is not God. God cannot sin. Lying is a sin. Come on, church. And whenever you read something like I just read, uh, and, and let that get into your spirit, he was a ransom for me. That means that whatever you've done, Whatever you've been involved in, I don't care if it was on the way to church. He was a ransom for that. The price has been paid. Man. Now, despite that, because that's the truth. That's a reality. That doesn't make it happen for you. Huh? Not everybody. Okay, the day Jesus died, he said, it's finished. You know, they put him in a tomb and then Three days later, he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Stones rolled away. They went in there. He's not here. You know, I, who you're looking for, he's not here. What I'm talking about is it was all in place. It was all done. But on that morning, everybody was not saved. And to this day, everybody's not saved. Why? I thought you said he was a ransom. He is. But you have to place your faith in Him. Y'all see what I'm talking about? This isn't automatic. This isn't just fall on you. You got to call upon the name of the Lord. You got to fight the good fight of faith. That's why we got to endure to the end, church. If we expect victory, if we expect to, you know, walk those streets of gold, uh, we got to hold on to His unchanging hand all the days of our life. I tell you right now, if you're believing, you're not going to let go. Amen. One more verse. Y'all might get out early for good behavior. But I, in Acts 13, while you're turning there, faith, listen, faith saves all. A double A. Man, how, how you know? How you know you'll say? Well, I, I read the whole Bible. I put about 30 hours in prayer a week. I, you know, I did this and I, that's not what the Bible teaches. Those are good things. Don't get me wrong. 
those are those are very helpful tools. They will strengthen you. They will they will solidify you. They will help you stay anchored. But the way we will be saved is faith. Amen. God's people walk by faith and not by sight. That means that sometimes you see something, that's sight, is it not? You see something, and that's real. But what you got to do is address that by faith. Come on, church. A lot of times, what makes sense to our flesh is not going to jive with faith. There's things that make a lot more sense. But the Word of God is, you know, uh, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So as we get more faith in us as a result of what? Hearing the Word of God. That's what you got to do. I need more. Lord, just give me more faith. Well, uh, okay, he, he, he'll agree with that. He'll help you with that. But I say you're going to have to start reading. I say you're going to have to start listening to the right stuff because you're going to get faith in something. But if you're not getting God's Word in you, you're going to get faith in something else. Church, proper faith, godly faith, saves all. And that is the key to closing the deal on this. I, we know we're sinners. We know we come short. We know Jesus was the ransom that he paid it all. But the deal's not closed. I want to seal this. You can get close to sealing a deal if you're a salesman. Ooh, look here, and just something don't go quite right, and mm, I didn't make that sale. This is something you better close the deal on. And the only way you're going to do that is by faith. Acts 13, verse 39. It says there, and by him all that believe are justified. Hmm. That justified's pretty good stuff. It's pretty important. The way I learned to remember that, what, what is justified? It means uh, it puts you in a state that is just as if you never sinned. Wow. That's, that's good stuff, isn't it? You mean, uh, yep, you're forgiven. Yep, he forgot it. And he, he, he pronounced you not guilty. He pronounced you not falling short. Why? Because you put your faith in his son. And you now walk in what he did and not what you did. Boy, that's good stuff right there. And by him, all that believe are justified. From all things. You mean, uh, now you don't know what I did. No, he said all things. Huh? There's even, you know, there's stuff people have done that are just hideous. I mean, like, wow, for real? They can be justified from that. I'm not going to tell you that the prisons are going to let you out when you do something so heinous. But I'll tell you this much, God will forgive you when you put your faith in Christ. And you may have to sit there and, and you know pay a debt to society till you draw your last breath. But the good news is, when you do draw your last breath, you're going to a place called heaven, regardless. And I think there may be people sitting in prisons today that the church would look at like they really don't deserve this. But guess what? You don't deserve it either. But we're walking in it. Amen. And the Bible says, if you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. So we we, we all are in the same predicament. Amen. And we ought to rejoice when somebody that was so far out there puts their faith in Christ and they get justified of all. Hmm. Religious people don't like that stuff. That's too bad, though. That's what's ruined the body of Christ. That's what's ruined the church. He said justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. You see that? From which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. That tells me there was some stuff that that law just wasn't good enough for. Huh? Ain't that what that just said? Or did I read that wrong? But you'd be surprised people want to go back to the old. I see a lot of it. 
And it really confuses me. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to get down here and pray. And it doesn't matter what I'm wearing. I don't have to blow a certain horn. I mean, there's just some stuff. You know, it says don't judge me by the, the feast and the new moons and the you wash your hands while I go, huh? You just ate a, de a demon, you know? Uh, you'd be surprised if people don't want to go back into this stuff. It says there were some things that that old covenant, that old law of Moses could not justify you. I'm just saying, this is better. And, and uh, hand me a new truck today, you know? Oh, I get to pick. It'd be like a GMC Denali or something like that. Now, if you're a forward lover, don't get mad at me. But I'm, I'm, I'm going on. And uh, let me let me put about 100, 200 miles on it. You know, like, wow. And then say, uh, you want to come back over here with what you had? I don't think so. Yep. I, I, I'd give it to somebody else. So, you know, I'm getting sidetracked. You know what's wrong with a lot of people, though? You give them a brand new truck. Seriously. You give them a brand new truck, title, God bless you, enjoy it. You know what they do with their old truck? Sell it for all they can get out of it. That's the difference between me and a lot of other folk. I'd go find me some hard-working man that didn't have one that good and say, God bless you. Did I just get sidetracked? It's called heart trouble. Condition of the heart. And I'm going to tell you, when you get God where he needs to be, there are some things that will change in us. Yeah. I'm, I want you to see something, though. As terrible as sin is, as, as terrible and dark as, as you know, a lot of things are, we can be justified from all. Now, when you clean, you feel good. Or I do. I feel a whole lot better clean than I do dirty. And man, when I get out of that shower, and I'm like, boy, I'm, I'm confident about the way I'm smelling. And, and I'm just feeling good, you know. That's, that's how you can be spiritually. And not because of something you've done, but because of what Jesus has done for you. And you just put it on. And you just begin to enjoy it, walk in it. Huh? That's where he wants us to be. That we realize. And that we know without a shadow of a doubt. I am redeemed. I am justified. And the enemy no longer has a right to me. That's what he wants for you, church. Every one of us. He wants you to lay down at night and sleep good. He does not want you to live in fear. He does not want to, you to live in worry and regret and all these other things. He wants to bless you all the days of your life. That's the plan he has for us. Amen. He loves you this morning. That is the truth. If you would stand and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I'm believing for a good week. Y'all with me? I'm believing that God is going to do miracles in our life. You know, it's been just rising up. I know Oliver's not in here, but I want us all to agree that these, them, them air infections, gone. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Gone in the name of Jesus. That's the authority that we have as believers. God is good. I said God is good. Y'all ready to pray? Father, we come right now in the precious name of Jesus. And Lord, we just lift you up. What you so rightly deserve we give to you, Lord. You deserve honor and glory and praise. We thank you, Lord, for being the ransom for us who have all failed in the area of sin, who have all come short of the glory of God. We thank you that you're our ransom. And Lord, right now we put our faith in you that we can be justified of all things. So we're going to leave out of here this morning just as clean and pure as the driven snow. You have took away our sin. You have pronounced us uh, not guilty. You have recorded our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we will continue to live for you. We will continue to walk with you. Lord, we lift up right now little Oliver. And we rebuke your infections in the name of Jesus. 
Devil, you take your hands off his body and don't you bring that stuff back no more in the mighty name of Jesus. By your stripes we are healed. Lord, I, I lift up those that are not here today because of sickness that's going around and we just come against that, Lord, that you touch, that you heal, that you minister, and Lord, that you would just cause us to be a lighthouse in the world that we live in. And we give you praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Smile, shake hands, be friendly.